Okay, in this video, let's see if we can make some sense of this important calculus topic of finding volumes of solids. So, try not to think of volume questions as anything in terms of three-dimensional. Try and think of it in terms of a bunch of two-dimensional pieces, so a bunch of cross-sections, let's call them, all added up over a, a particular interval. So, we're, we're rotating this, this region M, which is caught between these lines and the x-axis, and we're rotating about the x-axis. So what's going to happen is we're going to take this piece and it's going to revolve around here, as you can sort of see, and it's going to get these various disks of various sizes all on top of each other. And we're going to add those up from x equals 3 to x equals 7. So we know that those are circular disks, and if we think about the, the area of a circular disk, that's just pi r squared, right? It's a circle, the area of a circle is pi r squared. If we add all of those up, we'll get the volume, and that's what integration does for us. So our general form is volume equals the integral from x equals a to x equals b. Because we're revolving around a horizontal line, so we're revolving vertically around it, we're going to move across, and that's why we need everything in terms of x. So it'll be our area in terms of x dx. And that area is the area of, of one cross section. So these cross sections are circles. We know the formula for that is pi r squared. So our volume is going to be from x equals 3 to 7, because those are the boundaries. The area is pi r squared, and we'll figure out what r is going to be in a second, dx. OK, this doesn't seem so bad. So we can see that there's a bunch of different sizes of circular disks here, and those are changing as we move along the interval. But what's consistent is the height or is the radius of these disks. You can see that the radius is from the x-axis, which is the middle. Let's see if we can draw a point in. So the x-axis all the way to the blue line, which we can see is y equals the square root of x minus one. So that height is y which is the square root of x minus 1. Therefore, that's our radius. So it becomes the integral from 3 to 7 of pi r is the square root of x minus 1, no matter where we are in terms of x, squared dx. And we just square it because the radius is squared. So this will be, the pi can come out front, the integral of 3 to 7 of x minus 1. When we take something under the square root and we square it, uh, the square root just disappears, dx, and now we're ready to integrate. It's pi into x squared over 2, that's the integral of x, minus x evaluated from 3 to 7, which will be pi into, plug the 7 in first, so 49 over 2 minus 7, minus, plug the 3 in, 9 over 2, minus 3. Work this all out and we get pi into 49 over 2 minus 9 over 2 is 40 over 2. Minus 7 plus 3 is minus 4. So this is 20 minus 4 so it's 16 pi units cubed. Don't forget the units and it's got to be cubed because uh, it is a volume question. So again, try not to think of it in terms of any three-dimensional object, even though that's what's going to occur with the revolving. Try and think of it more as uh, it's a bunch of two-dimensional things that are infinitely uh, thin, infinitely small, I guess. Yeah, infinitely thin. And we're adding all of those up over a particular interval. Those intervals set up your limits on your integral, and then you just need a generic formula for the radius of each cross-section. Hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, you can always send us more calculus questions to info at arnoldtutoring.com. Thanks.